Hello everyone. This video is about poetic devices which are most commonly used in poems. This presentation is prepared and narrated by Preeti Shivastav, PGT English, Kendra Vidyalaya Sangathan. The first and the most common is simile. Here, two things are compared using like or as. For example, he is as busy as a bee. It means he is working hard as bees are known to be extremely busy. Now, whenever you are using like or as and comparing two things, two persons, it becomes simile. So, be careful wherever there is use of like or as. Remember, the poetic device will be simile. The second poetic device taken up over here is metaphor. Here, there is indirect comparison without using like or as. For example, the classroom was a zoo. Now, the comparison is between the classroom and the zoo without using like or as. If you write like a zoo, that becomes a simile. In the same way, if you say my teacher is a dragon. If you say like a dragon, that becomes a simile. If you say my teacher is a dragon, so that is a metaphor. So that is the difference between simile and metaphor. There is comparison in both. The only difference is in simile, there is use of like or as in metaphor. There is comparison without using like or as. The next poetic device is alliteration. It's about words with the identical beginning consonant sounds. Now, you will also be reading about assonance and consonance. And you will also understand the difference between the three, alliteration, assonance and consonance. So, go through the examples given in this slide. Come and clean the chaos in your closet. Go and gather the green leaves on the grass. In this way, you see the words with the identical beginning consonant sounds come under the poetic device alliteration. The next poetic device is assonance. It refers to the repetition of vowel sounds in close proximity. The light of the fire is a sight. This repetition of the long I sound goes slow over the road. In this way, the examples given in this slide refer to the poetic device assonance. It is the repetition of identical or similar vowel sound in a series of words, phrases and or syllables. And as I said, the next poetic device I am taking up is consonance. It refers to the repetition of consonant sounds in close proximity. Nearly identical to the definition of alliteration, consonants can occur at any place in the word beginning, middle or end. Alliteration is thus a special case of consonance since it is restricted only to the beginning of words or in the beginning of a stressed syllable. So that is the difference between consonance and alliteration. The examples of consonants are surely very interesting. You talk about consonants in pairs. So you see blank and think, spelled and scarred, sent and went, laughed and dept and so on. In the same way, consonants in sentences. Mike likes his new bike. I'll crawl away the ball. Toss the glass boss. In this way, you go through the sentences and you will understand that how consonance is used in pairs or sentences. The next poetic device is personification. A thing, an idea or an animal is given human attributes. Say for the example, the flame of the candle danced in the dark. The stars danced playfully in the moonlit sky. Obviously, the stars cannot dance. Humans do. She didn't realize that opportunity was knocking at her door. You can pause the video and go through the sentences. Just understand the meaning of personification. It is like that a thing, an idea or an animal is given human attributes. What humans can do. The next poetic device is antithesis. It juxtaposes two contrasting or opposing ideas usually within parallel grammatical structures. Now, rude words bring about sadness, but kind words inspire joy. See the examples which are given. Setting foot on the moon may be a small step for a man, but a giant step for mankind. So 
spoken by Neil Armstrong. Again, you must have heard of this proverb, speech is silver but silence is gold. Then better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, spoken by John Milton. So that is called antithesis, in which two contrasting or opposite ideas are used. The next poetic device is oxymoron. It's made up of two or more words that seem to be opposite to each other or actually are opposite. For example, act naturally, alone together, clearly confused, deafening silence. So, of course, when you see this example, so you will find that they seem to be opposite to each other, exactly opposite to each other. That is known as oxymoron. Again, a very interesting poetic device that is fun. It makes use of words that have more than one meaning or words that sound similar but have different meanings. Say Santa Claus helpers are known as subordinate clauses. She had a photographic memory but never developed it. A bicycle can't stand on its own because it's too tired. As you go through the examples, you will find that pun makes use of words that have more than one meaning or words that sound similar but have different meanings. To clearly understand what is pun. The next poetic device is a metopia. It is defined as a word which imitates the natural sounds of a thing. And I suppose it is the easiest poetic device. You see, whatever sounds they themselves represent some object, some animal, those come under this poetic device. Say for example, and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling and out of the houses the rats came tumbling. Such a beautiful example of this device given to you. The next poetic device is imagery. It's a use of figurative language to represent objects, actions and ideas in such a way that it appeals to our physical senses. Say it was dark and dim in the forest. So the words dark and dim are the visual images. In the same way, the girl ran her hands on a soft satin fabric. The idea of soft in this example appeals to our sense of touch or tactile sense. So it is a use of figurative language to represent objects, actions or ideas in such a way that it appeals to our physical senses. The next poetic device is symbolism. Here a writer uses one thing, usually a physical object or phenomena, to represent something more abstract. You must have read about this poem when Shakespeare says all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely plays. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. These lines are symbolic of the fact that men and women in the course of their lives perform different roles. A stage here symbolizes the world and players, of course, they symbolize human beings. You can go through the next example as well. Just remember that in symbolism, a writer uses one thing, usually a physical object or phenomena, to represent something more abstract. The next poetic device is irony. Here, words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning of the words. It may also be a situation that ends up in quite a different way than what is generally anticipated. In simple words, it's a difference between appearance and reality. If you go through the examples, you will see that how irony is clearly visible in the poetry. The doctor is as kind-hearted as a wolf. His friend's hand was as soft as a rock. And the other examples which are given to you. You can pause the video and go through the examples and find out that how irony is used. The next poetic device is hyperbole. Here, specific words and phrases that exaggerate and overemphasize the basic crux of the statement in order to produce a grander, more noticeable effect. For example, she cried so long that she made a lake. It's clearly an exaggeration. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Of course, an exaggeration. You can go through the other examples as well. The last poetic device I've taken over here is repetition. Repetition is often used in poetry or song and it is used to create rhythm and bring attention to an idea. 
So you see the examples. If you think you can do it, you can do it. So there's repetition of you can do it. In the same way, if you go through all the sentences, so you will find that repetition is used to create rhythm and bring attention to an idea. So in this video, I have taken up specific and selected poetic devices. In the next video, I'll be taking up more. So thank you for watching.